you head out onto the water with your stand-up paddleboard, it's really important you plan your paddle to help ensure you and your paddling buddies have a fun and safe sup session. Make sure you consider the following. The wind and the weather, your location, the tide or the river conditions, appropriate clothing, your personal flotation, communication and emergency, your equipment and the correct leash. In this SUP Safe video, I'm going to be talking about leashes, an incredibly small but very important piece of kit to keep you safe on the water when you're stand up paddleboarding. Most people now understand that you should wear a leash when you're stand up paddleboarding, but do you know there's quite a few different types of leashes? And to make sure you're SUP safe on the water, you should understand when and where to use each different type. Do you know why you should wear a leash? The different types of leashes available which type of leash best suits which type of paddling you're doing, the potential dangers of wearing the wrong leash, and how to best care for your leash. So starting off, why should we wear a leash? Your leash is what keeps you connected to your board, keeping it at close reach at all times. Sup boards are big and can quickly be blown away from you if you fall in and you aren't attached by a leash. And swimming after your board whilst holding a paddle is not the easy option. A simple leash can help save lives, but there is also instances where wearing incorrect leash or the wrong attachment of your leash has cost somebody their life. So what are the different types of leashes available and when should you use each one? Now there are two main types, coiled and straight sub leashes. Coiled leashes are the most common leashes. The benefit of being coiled means they sit on the back of your board, not trailing in the water behind getting caught in any seaweed or any other debris. And because it's being coiled, it means you've got less chance of tripping over it as well. It's ideal for general flat water paddling, racing and touring. It can also then be combined with a quick release when paddling in moving water, which we'll discuss about in a moment. They're not ideal in the surf where your leash is likely to become under quite a lot of tension, which would cause a coiled leash and your board to spring back towards you. Straight leashes are most commonly used in the surf. They can also be used on flat water paddling in non-moving waters, for example, lakes and coastal locations with limited flow. You may want to pull your leash onto the back of your board so it's out of the water, not trailing behind you and slowing you down and again, catching more debris like seaweed. Whether coiled or straight, all leashes have an end which fastens to your board, usually a Velcro fastener, which you can connect directly to the D-ring of your inflatable paddle board or the string loop on your hard composite board. The main part of your leash is usually made out of solid plastic of which you can get different thicknesses and qualities available depending on the strength you want your leash to be. Then it's attached to you with a Velcro attachment. Now there are three main ways to attach your leash to you and this is very important. The ankle is the most commonly used. Now this is ideal for general paddling in non-moving waters, surfing, racing, touring. It's easy to fit over whatever clothing you're wearing. It's not uncomfortable if you're kneeling on your board. Then you have attaching it to your calf, which is further up your leg. This keeps your leash more out of the way, less chance of you tripping over your leash when you're moving around the board. It can be used in all types of paddling again, but more commonly used with racers, downwinding paddlers, or surfers where you want to move around the board a little bit more. The third way to attach your leash is with a waist quick release. Now this is basically a belt with a quick release attachment which goes around your waist and which the Velcro fastening of your leash attaches to it. Pulling on the quick release toggle around your waist quickly releases yourself from the leash and your board. We recommend this leash attachment when you're paddling in any kind of moving water from slow moving rivers, estuaries to quick tidal flows or just white water. It's best to be paired up with a coiled leash if you can, helps keep your leash out of the water as much as possible so it doesn't get any debris as you're paddling along. It's essential you know how to operate your quick release. It's well worth practicing it on dry land first so you feel comfortable knowing how to release your leash in an emergency situation. And the most common time you're gonna to have to use that quick release is if your leash becomes entangled with some sort of debris or object that is fixed to the ground or the riverbank and it is not moving with you in the flow. Then you can become entangled and pinned underneath the water and you can use the quick release leash to get rid of your board and float away from the obstacle. With an ankle or calf leash you would not be able to reach that with the flow of the water on your body so it's vital that you use a waist quick release leash when you're in any moving or tidal waters. 
It's really important you choose the correct leash and the types of paddling you're doing and attach it in the safest, most practical way. So if you're paddling on non-moving waters, a coiled leash or a straight leash around the ankle or calf is recommended. In the surf, it's better to use a straight leash always around the ankle and calf. And in moving waters, slow tidal rivers or fast white water, a coiled leash with a waist quick release belt is a must. Your leash acts a bit like a lifeline, so it's so important to keep it in good working order. Your leash can easily perish and get weakened in the sun. So when it's not in use, ensure it's stored out of direct sunlight, as well as being rinsed regularly with fresh water. When you're carrying it with your board down to the water's edge, make sure it's not dragging along the ground because that can weaken your leash. It's important to regularly check your leash for any cracks or plastic damage on the cord. They will generally have a few years lifespan at most. You're better off replacing your leash before it breaks rather than facing a swim after your board or trying to tie it back together when you're out on the water. Leashes really can help save lives if used correctly. It's no good just trailing along behind your board or left in the bag on the beach. And if you forget your leash, please think twice about getting afloat. But remember, it's equally important to wear a leash, but it's also just as important to wear the correct type of leash for the paddling you're doing. And also remember, a leash should not be an alternative to wearing a PFD. Both are equally important. If you haven't already made sure you check out our other SupSafe video about PFDs and the different options available to suit you and your paddling. We hope you found this video informative. Definitely understanding when and where and what type of leash you should be using is incredibly important to keeping you safe when you're stand-up paddleboarding. We hope this video has taught you all of those things and please share this video with other paddleboarders to make us all more sup safe on the water.